This conference will now, now be recorded. Um, so so I, I think that's one of my favorite moments because it was it was a moment where we could clearly identify that our sinus basketball was back in contention in the centennial uh, and back to where they were in the early mid 2000s. Um, so that's definitely one of my favorite. I have to say up there too is, is playing at Penn um, my junior year. And it was, it was a similar situation where we were rebuilding and, you know, we had a lot of doubt about what we could do and who we were and whether we can compete in the Centennial, which is, which is one of the best Division three conferences. And we almost beat Penn at Penn, which is obviously a Patriot League team. Um, and we were playing with them the whole game and tied at halftime. And I thought it was another moment for us where we all looked around the room and we were like, okay, we, 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 can, we can compete with anybody here. There's no reason we can't go out and try to win the Centennial. Um, so th those are two of my favorites, I have to say. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, we felt the same way, Maddie, right up until we went to Dickinson that year. Uh, yeah. uh, well, I won't uh, point it out too much, but Maddie, I earlier said he demonstrated. He was, Matt, you were one of the most urgent I'll never forget you wheeling around when you made the big three in overtime against Muhlenberg at Muhlenberg to help us win the game and doing the big fist pump right at the coach. Uh, very urgent competitor, um, a terrific score, but also I said demonstrated unbelievable resilience. Um, uh, we were a team that suddenly looked like we could win a centennial. And Maddie tore his ACL at Dickinson as a junior the very same weekend as a junior in high school, he tore the ACL in his other knee. Random coincidence, obviously, but striking wasn't that he tore both his ACLs. It was how Matt handled that moment of adversity and was back in time and went on to be a first team all league player as a senior. Um, I was with great admiration that I think about your recovery there, Matty. Um, Thank you, I appreciate that. All right, how about any favorite stories of your coaches or players? Uh, you can feel free to pick on Raph, uh, me, if you want. Um, uh, Dennis gave a story about me grabbing him that is fictitious. Like, it must have felt like I was assaulting him, but uh, what, what about you, uh, Maddie? So uh, the ACL was, was a good segue into this one because that that's definitely one of my favorite stories about you. Um, and so when I tore my ACL, um, it was halfway through my junior season, and it was it was a tricky situation, not just for me, but I don't think I appreciated how tricky it was for you, Coach, because you look at um, where we were and my role on the team, and um, there was a lot of unknown after I got hurt about what I was going to be able to do my senior year, whether I was going to be able to play the whole season, was I going to be back to where I was, um, and how do you manage all that? Um, and so I, I remember when I got hurt, um, sitting down with you in your office and uh, kind of outlining what this was going to look like. And you saying to me, I, I said to you, you know, I, I'm going to be back to where I was. And you said to me, I don't think you're going to be back to where you were. I think you're going to be better. And at that time, obviously just hurt. Everyone's telling you you're not going to be the same for two years, which two years my career's going to be over. I had a lot of doubts. Um, and to have you kind of feed that confidence to me and feed the belief that I actually could be better kind of spoke it into existence. I think I, that was, I don't think I appreciate at the time how you manage that situation. Um, but you didn't just say it, you genuinely meant it. And you were honest with me throughout the whole throughout the whole process. So I remember then when I came back in the fall and started playing just before our first scrimmage, um, our first inner squad as well. We sat down right before the inner squad, and you know the role I played on the team last year. I wanted to start. I wanted to be the same guy I was, but I just I was not there. I just started playing basketball a week before our inner squad scrimmage, and coach sat me down. And he said, he was completely honest with me. He said to me, you're not where you were. You're not where we want you to be. Um, and so you're not starting the inner squad. You're going to play with the second team on the inner squad. So he pulled the right button for me. Um, 
And so we go out and he was being completely honest with me throughout this whole process, which was fantastic. Uh, so we go out in the inner squad the next day and I was pissed, obviously, because I wanted to play. Um, and I, I played very well. And it was the first day where I was kind of like, screw the knee. I'm not favoring this thing. I'm just going out and I'm playing. I don't care. Um, and I went into his office the day after the inner squad, after I played really well. And he sat down and he said, uh, you were 38 in the inner squad yesterday. So that was a big fuck you to the coaching staff. I guess you're going to start on the scrimmage and start day one. And we're going to scratch that whole plan. Um, so, so that was, that was a, one of my favorites from coach small. Um, and, and just, I, I know that it, it's funny how that whole thing transpired, but the way he dealt with that situation from that day, when he said, you're starting the scrimmage, we're, we're off to the races. We really never looked back and it wasn't like, we were never worrying about my knee again. We were just, we were playing. We were just back to where we were. Um, and I thought coach handled that situation incredible because a lot of coaches, they might have kind of moved on and, and checked out on their guy. Um, but, but coach believed in me and he thought I was going to come back to where I was. So uh, that's one of my favorite coach stories. Um, for RAF, I, I had too many to even count. Um, so, but, but my favorite thing about RAF um, was – being a point guard under Coach Small, any point guard in, on this chat knows, it, it's it's not easy. And Coach knows, it, it's not easy because while you get some credit, a lot of times you're, you're, you're going to get the brunt of a lot of blame because you're like the quarterback. Um, you're running the show. He gives you a lot of leeway to run the show. But if things aren't going well, it's also on you too because you're the quarterback. Um and Raph, the way he dealt with our team was he would take, he would, even if it wasn't on him, he would take anything. He was completely selfless um, in his style of play and the way he went about the team. Um, so I thought Raph really changed the way our team played because of how selfless he was. So when one guy is really selfless, the whole team starts to play really selfless. Um, so Raph really changed the way we played um, and, and just the way he acted. So, um, and it's really fun to be a shooting guard for Raph because if you've ever played with him, he can yeah, pass. Yeah, I was going to say, you and Eric <laughs> made it a little bit easier out there for sure. <laughs> it's easy to get in target practice. <laughs> that he prefers to pass or he can't shoot. See all of the above. We weren't quite sure which one it was. So, uh, all right, Maddie, share share with our current guys um, some of the, the the things you took away from Ursinus and Ursinus basketball in terms of skills and tools that maybe you've used now that you're actually out in the business world. Um, Absolutely. So, um, I would say as an 18 year old kid, like like most of us, probably when we're 18, we're where uh, I was a pretty shy kid, pretty unsure of myself. Um, and I think Ursinus is a community that really, you can find your niche. So th there's a place for everybody there. And I think the, the basketball community for me was a place where I got really comfortable um, with the group of guys that we had and the coaching staff we had. I was really comfortable with that group that I was really truly to be able to be who I was. Um, and I didn't really, by the time I was a senior, I wasn't second guessing, you know, saying what I wanted to say or being who I want, who I wanted to be. When I walked into a room, I was who I was. And I think everybody knew that on the team. Um, and I, I couldn't say that when I was, when I was 18 years old, when I walked into the room then. So I think I really just became really comfortable with myself. And now when I'm out in the, in the business world or just out in the world in general, when I walk into a room, I, I'm confident in myself. I'm comfortable with who I am. And I think I can hold my own in any conversation. Um, and I, I couldn't have said that when I came to your sinus. And it was the community and the group that we had that kind of fostered that with me. That's pretty awesome. Uh, it's incredible to hear. And obviously my hope for all of you is, Look, I told Sasha the other day, going away to school and college, 
is a transformative time, right? You're going to, you're going to learn here are the things that I really want to be. And you're going to try on a bunch of different hats, but like Maddie just shared, you're, you're going to, you're going to find your voice. This, I'm, I'm going to shed these insecurities. This is me, right? Um, pretty cool advice. So how about, how about, you know, you, you demonstrated as a player effort matters. Your game was not just that of a polished scorer, but you played as if like, you know, your, your backside was on fire. But you also brought that to the way you trained. And I can remember your mom telling me a story at Christmas in your senior season when she brought cookies to me and my wife. And you all know I'm a, like, I ran four miles a day just so I can go house sugar tonight, right? So I was all about, you know, Michelle's cookies. But she said, you know, Maddie wouldn't eat any of these the entire time from surgery until he was playing again. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? She's like, oh, he, he said that they would be fat that he couldn't have because he wasn't working out. Is that a true story, Matt? That's 100% true. All right, so given that, I, I mean it, like that's a commitment to saying, I wanna play basketball at the highest level, that you're willing to completely alter and shape your diet. We have a very different off season here, right, guys? Like this is a, this is different. We're not able to really go work on our game the same way we historically or traditionally have. Uh, we'd be coming up in right now. We'd be talking about camp and roommates and who you're going to be with in Ritter North, you know, or New Dorm, uh, working camp. Um, there won't be any of that. Matt, what are some you know advice you might have for our current group in terms of how to transform their games? this summer because our reality is not unlike the reality of your journey from you know we're obviously starting much further than where you started but we were 12 and 13 last year and eyes wide open about great league it's not good enough we want to win a championship we want to be a playoff team what advice might you have for our guys about how best to go about their off season yeah so um I thought the way I looked, so I, as you and Ralph are both aware, like the way that I played, I wasn't the most athletic kid in the gym. I couldn't jump at all. I was quick enough, but I wasn't quick. Um, so I think that the, the differentiator for me was my off season. It always was. Um, and, I, and it wasn't something that was necessarily just ingrained in me. I, I didn't always have it. Um, and I didn't have it going into my freshman year of college. I, I developed it after my freshman year, and it was a conscious decision that I made. So I remember after my freshman year, I had a we were we were not good my freshman year, and I had a very poor season individually. And I remember looking at our stats after the season, and our team was like eighth or ninth out of ten in the conference. And when you looked at minutes played, I was last on the team in minutes played. So I remember talking to my dad about it. And I remember I was a little insecure about myself at the time. And I remember saying to him, I literally might be the worst player statistically in the Centennial Conference. I played the least amount of minutes and we were one of the worst teams. So it was a conscious decision I made that was like, okay, I'm all in here. I'm not going to look back after my senior year and have any regrets about how I handled my basketball career. So I really learned this from Dennis Stanton, who was my assistant coach my freshman year. And about halfway through the year, you know, I wasn't playing on game days. So game days was like an off day for me. And Dennis would make sure I was wanted to make sure I was getting my workout in. And, He'd grab me and we'd work out on game day. And then all of a sudden it turned into we were working out, um, not just game day, but we were pretty much working out every day. Um, and so I remember the second half of my freshman year, I just worked out with Dennis every day. And he taught me two really important things that I took with me into all my off seasons. And it was purpose and it was process. Um, number one, in terms of process, like I genuinely really liked the process of getting better. So when I say that, I don't mean that like I genuinely liked on a 95 degree day in July, 
going outside and working out for an hour and a half. I, I'm not going to tell you like, oh, I love that. But I loved the feeling that gave me. I loved how I felt after that. I loved that I could say at, after that workout that that's going to better me for when we play in our season. So it's impossible to say like you're going to love every workout you're going to do, but you're going to love the way that makes you feel after and that sense of accomplishment. So that's, that, that, that's the number one thing in terms of process. And I truly loved the process. And then in purpose, what I never worked out with purpose when I was in high school. I would just kind of like go outside, get shots up, touch the ball, you know, oh, I got my 500 shots up. But it wasn't simulating an actual game. So what Dennis really made sure I was doing was, okay, when you go home in the summer, you're not just going to shoot, you're going to shoot at game speed. And you're going to shoot even faster than you shoot in the game. So you become comfortable shooting that way. And you're not going to go home, and you're not going to work on breakdown drills. Because we don't break down in your science offense. That's not the way we play. You're going to go home, and you're going to work on one dribble pull-ups. You're going to go home, and you're going to work on coming off staggered screens. You're going to go home, and you're going to work on flare. So I would really make sure that when I was working out, it was simulating an actual game. Um, so I think those are the two most most important things that I like genuinely loved the process and how it made me feel. And I worked out with purpose. And then something I also like really enjoyed about it was I think it's really interesting when you come back to school in the fall. I always found that time really interesting because when you come back and you're playing pickup, you can look around the room and you could see who busted their ass this summer and who didn't. It's very, very evident. Um, and I love the fact that in my head, I was going to leave school and I was going to be one player and I was going to come back and I was going to be a completely different player. And all summer, I was working to come back and be a completely different player. Um, and something else I really liked about it was, um, you know, coach has these conditioning tests and I don't you, I'm assuming you guys still do the six minute mile, the bench press, all that. And obviously, Raf's laughing. I didn't love the six minute mile. Like, no one loves it. But if you go back and you look at the numbers, like, I wanted to make sure that every year when I did the bench, the six minute mile, the pull ups, the jump rope, that my numbers were substantially better than the year before. So, all summer, I was working so that my numbers. You could look at them, and that was tangible evidence that I knew I'd put in the work that summer. Um, so that was like a tangible way for me to look at the goal in like a short term before like the season even started. Um, so, so that was kind of the way I looked at it. And, you know, it wasn't – I didn't always love the process. I didn't always have purpose, but it was something I learned. Cool. Uh, pretty incredible advice um, for all of us. Uh, to work backwards. You guys hear me say that a lot, like, hey, we're going to work backwards from this is how to win a championship. What do we have to do between now and then? You know, this is <laughs> this is you as a senior. This is you now as a freshman. This is the dream together we want to get you to. Let's work backwards from there. You're essentially saying, I'm going to work backwards from those fitness tests on October 15 and make sure those are different. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, how about, you know, you were part of some, some really successful teams, too. Uh, uh, how, how, what were some of the attributes or traits that you think are valuable to share with us that successful teams that are scientists had? What makes a successful team? Yeah, so when I was looking at this question, there were two things um, that came to mind for me. And the number one thing was, I think, an identity. Um, so I, I look back at our senior year, Raph, my senior year, your junior year, and I think that season we had a true identity and we knew who we were. So we knew that we weren't going to be the most athletic team. That's not how we were built, but we were, might be more skilled than the other team. Um, we knew that we weren't going to break the guys down off the bounce, like six, seven dribbles, but we might play in a way that we could go pass, 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 cut, pass, and that's how we were going to win. Um, so I think we truly knew who we were, and we didn't stray from that. 
And I and the whole rebuilding process that we went through, I think we started cre creating that identity my sophomore year, but there were times we strayed from it. And the same goes for my junior year. There were times in games that you would not think that we played as a team. Um, but I can genuinely say that our sen my senior year and that team I was on, everybody knew their role and everybody knew the identity that we had. And the identity we had was we were gonna be selfless. <clears throat> and I look at how <clears throat> I viewed the game when I was 18 compared to how I viewed the game when I was a senior. And it's, <clears throat> it's a lot different because of guys like Raph and Coach Small. And um, our identity was, like I said, selflessness. So when I was, when I was a freshman, my, in college, I was always a scorer. So when I was a freshman, I was always going to look at how I played compared to how many points I scored. It's just how I looked at how, measure, how I measured it. Um, and I cared. Like, I, if I was being honest, like, I, my freshman year, like, yeah, I totally cared how many points I scored. My, by the time I was a senior, I genuinely did not care about my own individual performance. So, and, and I look at how I looked at the game differently. So, I, I say, I, when I look back at my career, I think that one of the, probably the best or one of the best games I ever played was when we played at Johns Hopkins in a playoff game, um, my team here and we won. And I went one for seven. And as a scorer, I went one for seven. You're like, oh, you played like shit. I honestly think it might've been the best game I ever played because on the other end of the floor, I was guarding Michael Gardner. And it was one of my best defensive performances. I remember like I got him, he was really uneasy and he really had an off game. We ended up winning by like 25. And Zach Quattro and Eric Williams both went off that night. The two other guy, two guys who could really shoot it, they both went off that night. And I remember from like six minutes in the game, I missed my first couple and they were both hot. And I remember thinking to myself, my job is to guard Gardner tonight. My job is not to score. And I would not have looked at the game that way my freshman year. I would have kept pressing a little bit. And I, after I would have been like, ah, I could have played better. Like, yeah, I wish I made shots, but like, I genuinely think that was one of the best games I ever played. Um, and I was one for seven. And um, I think like our identity and the way we looked at basketball were just like completely different my senior year than prior in my career because we knew who we were. Knowles, Knowles, and another thing I'd probably add, kind of what the traits those teams had was just the intensity at what we competed, at how we competed. And that started, I mean, I remember back, it's probably the, the first or second week of pickup my freshman year. And I, I don't know, for whatever reason, I'm guarding you that day. And I just remember going at it with you. And it, it was just how we competed. And I just, right, right after you, you started talking to me more and that's how we kind of became friends. But that continued along with those guys like Malik, Mark, Joe, I mean, those those pickup games in the fall and the spring, they were like wars. They and really I, were. I mean, I did not want to lose a series. And I still think my winning percentage is ridiculous in the amount of series series games won. But I think a lot of it started there where it was like guys just going at each other. But a, a, after all that and on, on, on the court, we left it there. And I, I think it kind of just made uh, the culture and, and kind of the team bond stronger for sure. That, that couldn't be more true, Raph. I mean – there were many instances where guys were fist to cuffs in pickup games, like Mark and Joe, like me and Raph multiple times in practice and in pickup, like Mark and Joe actually went and fought. Um, we had to break that one up. Me and you many times. It was, it was chippy. And, um, I, I think we, another part of those teams were we had the ability to, be incredibly, incredibly competitive with each other, but also play together really, really well. So I, I remember um, my the summer we were going to abroad. <clears throat> Eric Williams, who is the best shooter I've ever played with, um, we're we're practicing um, before we went abroad, and he was coming in as a freshman. 
and he was lights out the whole like workouts we, we practiced for like two weeks i mean the kid didn't miss for two weeks you remember that raf like it was yeah. it was wild and i remember like going home and being like holy shit like this kid is incredible like i have to, i have to up my game to like keep up like keep up with with eric because like this kid's the real deal and then i'd be like we get back to school and eric's working hard and i'm like oh i gotta keep up with him and then i'm working real hard and eric's like i gotta keep up with him and then we're all just working a lot harder because we set that precedent and we're all competing with each other. But at the same time, when we go out and we're playing together, I'm making him better. You're making me better. He's making me better. It, it was, it was a great dynamic that we had that like fostered really hard work and competitiveness, but also like cohesion. That's pretty incredible. I, I, guys, we're, we're there because I know how competitive we are and that we genuinely want to be iron sharpens iron. But let that be a reminder that it's okay to have tension. Then you just gotta leave it at the court, right? And also like, you guys weren't like still ticked off like two days later, wow. right? You're still boys. Um, okay, uh, what does our sign as college men's basketball? Well, we always term UCMB. What's that mean to you? Yeah, so, what you hear from a lot of guys, and I'm going to second that, is UCMB equals family. Like, it is – I have never been part of a group of guys like Ursinus Basketball. It is the best experience I've ever had in my life, and I cherish the moments I've had that those four years like nothing else. Um, but I think something else when I really think about my experience was – and Raph would, would agree with me because we went through the same stuff, was Ursinus basketball taught me how to be a more well-rounded well individual. So going through the rebuilding process, it taught me how to fail a lot because we lost a lot. And then we worked really, really, really hard, and we got to a point where we succeeding. So it taught us how to succeed, and it taught us how – to go through that process of failing, failing, continuing to fail, but you're not gonna give up, you're gonna keep working, keep working, and eventually the tide's gonna turn. And guess what? When you get there to that point where you start to succeed, it's gonna feel a hell of a lot better than if you didn't put in how much work you put in. So I think it's just like, the, the family aspect is unlike anything else, and I have my best friends for life from her sinus basketball, and also what it taught me how to like deal with situations and deal with failure and how to get success out of that failure is something I'll take throughout the rest of my life. So I think all of you, you know, Emily and Katie included, are hearing why Maddie was such a special player for us because it wasn't just about scoring. Obviously Maddie, somebody who speaks from the heart is really earnest. I always has been from the moment I met him. I remember when you came to your dad to your first official visit on campus. Um, uh, and he has some of the same roots you do, Trey. You know, that Northeast Pennsylvania, just earnestness. You just do the do the work and you do it the right way because it's the right thing to do. Um, but he was also a profound leader for us. Um, and at a team that right now is blessed with all kinds of really talented leaders, Matt, you would still stand out. Uh, maybe you can tell us just a little bit about what you think are characteristics of a great leader. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think that as a leader, there's many different ways you can go about it. Um, the things that I thought were really important when I was going through that was number one, and, and it it was it wasn't a, a, a I don't think it's going to be a problem for any leader on this team because of how close your science basketball is. But you need to make sure you have relationships with everybody in the program <clears throat> and not just a relationship with your six best buddies. You know, you might have a couple guys you're closer to on the team than other guys, obviously. But you need to make sure as a senior that you're taking care of that relationship with the freshmen. Because if you don't have a relationship with people you're around and the people you're trying to lead, what you say holds no value. So – if you're, if I'm as a senior telling Ryan McTamney, this is how we're going to do it, and I'm not 
I haven't put time into getting to know Ryan, showing him around campus, working out with him. I just say, dude, I don't even know you. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you're not going to tell me what to do. I don't even have a relationship with you. So number one, I think, is you, you need to make sure you have those relationships with not just the guys in your class or the upperclassmen, but with everybody. Um, and the second thing I would say would be, <clears throat> and everybody would say this, but it couldn't be more true, is you have to lead with example. And I think um, it's crazy to me the impact that a leader can have on a group because it cultivates culture. So when I'm a, or when Raf's a senior, I'm a senior, like, and Raf's the first guy in the gym when he's the captain, the freshmen who just like doesn't know how things are done are gonna be like, oh wow, like this is how Raf's doing it. Like Raf's obviously had success here. Like this is how I should do it. And all of a sudden you have this culture of like, okay, everybody's following Raf's lead of working really hard and giving 100%. And so like, if Raf sets an example on a, you know, this is how we handle ourselves on the weekends. Like we have fun, but like, we're not into like this stuff. And Raf sets that precedent as the captain, the freshmen who like might be more prone to move in that direction will be like, oh, well like Raf's doing this and like, I have to follow him because he's the guy. So I think like, the leading by example couldn't be more true because one or two leaders and the way they act cultivates culture for the entire group. And it, it, the power of it's, it, it's incredible. All right, so we won't be on here too much longer, but I, I did, I have one last question and we'll open it up to anyone else. If you've got questions for Maddie, uh, this has been great, Maddie. Thank you very much. Um, uh, my question was, is anyone that you most admired playing against or for or with, you know, um, in your in your career at Ursinus, like who did you particularly like to play with, and who did you really not to like playing against? Hello. Yeah. Sorry, I cut out for a second there. Okay. Who were guys? Um, that so, yeah. So. Okay. So playing with, and I'm not just saying this because he's on the call. I mean, it hurts me to give him this much credit, um, yes, but I have to say, <laughs> uh, my two favorite guys to play with, hands down, Brian Rafferty and Mark Wonderling. And the reason I job. love, and, and big job, and big job. Um, and, and the reason I loved playing with those guys is because they changed the way I look at the game. Um, those, Mark Wonderling was a kid a year a year ahead of me. He's my roommate, um, one of my best friends, one of the greatest kids I've ever met in my life. Mark and Raph were the most unselfish people I'd ever played with. So they created an environment on our team that everybody wanted to make the next the extra pass. So Raph, it's just in the nature that he plays, right? Like he was an incredible passer. So Raph was always making that extra pass. So when Raph does that, I get the ball and I drive and two guys come and I'm like, all right, let's keep it going. So like we created this like culture of playing where like it was like the, the, the plays that we got excited about were the plays where there was like bang, 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 cut, bang, somebody hits a three. It was like that's the stuff we got like really excited about. We didn't get ex – we were happy when somebody like breaks somebody down, but like we genuinely thought it was really cool when like everybody touched it really quick and then we got a three or something like that. So they, so they changed the way I looked at the game. Um, and they were the most unselfish, unselfish player I've ever played with. And I would say as a freshman, if I was being honest, like I probably had a little bit of a selfish streak in me. And by the time I was a senior, like I, I did it because I played with guys like Raph and Mark and they changed the way I looked at the game. Um, so I love playing with those guys. Um, guys that I, I admired playing against, um, I would have to say, as much as it hurts me again to say it, is, I mean, SWAT, you have to, I hated playing against them, but you have to admire the culture they have. Um, you know, they're a group of guys that are all 
could be really, really good individually, and they're all sacrificing individually in order to be great as a team. Um, so you have to admire that. Um, and they play the game the right way. Um, so always admired the way that they played. And then um, the last person I would say, and it hurts me again, but uh, Brandon Federici, FNM, uh, phenomenal scorer at FNM. And he was a kid that you just knew when it was crunch time, he was going to hit the big shot. Like you just like knew he was a killer. Like he was going to hit the big shots. And while that pissed you off playing against it, you're like, damn, like you have to respect that. Like the kid's a killer. Like he's, he's going to make the big shots when it matters. So you have to respect that. Um, so I'd have to say those were the people that I respected their games the most. Bruce, Tyler, he went to Lawrenceville. So that should make it even more raw. He's very Lawrenceville. Uh, uh, but Brandon Federici obviously was an all-time great. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, two-time All-American for f and And what's most upsetting for me is that we had the top four scorers in conference history, and he, he, he still owns the most points ever. Uh, and, and bumped past Nick Shattuck, Dennis Stanton, Richie Barrett, all these great scorers. So we no longer hold that record. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, let's, uh, let's open this up if anyone has any, any questions for Maddie. Again, I don't want to be on here too much longer uh, because I know you guys have stuff to go do. But does anyone have any questions uh, for Maddie? I have one. Like just during like the rebuild, like how did you guys like stay connected? Like as a team, like what were some of the things like the leaders did and stuff like that? When like obviously like you guys weren't where you wanted to be. So what were some of the things like the leaders did during that time? Yeah. So it, it wasn't it. it the rebuild made the success that much greater, but the rebuild, it wasn't easy. Um, so I would say, there, and Coach Small uh, did a really good job of this too, there was a very, very conscious effort to make sure that we were doing things as a team and to make sure that everybody was included in the things that we did and that we had to make sure that we had no bad eggs. Um, when we rebuild, we we tore it down, and um, I, I think Mark did a really good job of this in the way like he spoke this into the team. But he created an environment where we we did everything together. Like we were together literally twenty four seven. I'm sure you guys are the same way. So like doing things together wasn't hard because we loved each other and like we loved hanging out together and we had a blast together but i think the part that was probably hard was like making sure that even when we were failing that everybody was still all in because when you start to fail you got some people that might be all in but you got guys that are probably checking out and i thought mark did a really good job of making sure like he, he would grab guys and he would be like Okay, we lost a bunch in a row. You're not playing. You're probably pissed off. This is what – you did this during the game, um, and I thought that was selfish. He would grab guys, and he would sit down with guys and, like, have those conversations and be like, we just need to check this and be like, okay, we're all in here. Like, there's no bullshit. Like, nobody's checking out here. If you're in, you're in. So I, I think it was – when we failed, we had like, you have to have like candid conversations with each other about like making sure that you're all on the same page about moving forward. And I think Mark, just who he was as a person, like he wasn't afraid to have those conversations and he wasn't afraid to call guys out when they like didn't abide by what we were trying to do. Um, and, if you, and if you're going through a rebuild and you're failing and failing and guys are checking out and you don't have a guy, that's checking them, that's when things I think could have easily gone south. And I think we did a good job of monitoring that and making sure that we got 12 guys, 12 guys are all in here. It's a great question, Ryan. Uh, and it's, um, what do we call that? That idea that what Mark did, it's iron sharpens iron, right? 
and that idea of having a healthy culture where if you have, and we all fail, if you did something that was selfish, you call each other out on that and say, yep, you're right, team, I'm team first. I hit that sign, it's a reminder, team first, right? You're gonna get over yourself. Uh, that's a great, great question and a really you know, terrific answer. Other questions? Um, a lot of my questions were already answered, but um, I did take a couple like notes, like I just jotted some things down on my phone because I think they're important to reiterate um, just to the guys right now right, because of the situation we're in. Um, and one of them, a common theme between what you said and what Dennis Stanton said the other week is that when, when you guys are working out, we got to be doing things full speed, but doing things that you're going to be doing in our offense. I did a shooting workout today and probably wasted 20 minutes of my time doing something like that. I'm probably never going to do it in a game. Um, so that's something that, like, you can just use going forward. Um, another thing I think it's funny that you mentioned um, is that you said when you show up in the fall and, you know, you run a pickup, you know who was working their ass off and who wasn't. And Bruce and I were just talking about that, like, two or three days ago. Um, so I'm just bringing that up because – you know, it's just one of those things that should be motivating you guys. Like, you don't want to be that guy, which is why we have that Snapchat group, why we're all working out. But um, it's just another another way for us to kind of motivate each other. So make sure you're jumping in, posting your workouts and all that kind of stuff. But I guess the biggest thing, my biggest takeaway from what you said, um, was about the difference between the freshman you and the senior you in that as a freshman, you were worried about points per game, that kind of stuff. Um, and as a senior, what mattered was you did what you could so that the team could win, whatever that was. And I think it's important for us, especially the young guys, to try to get to that point as fast as we possibly can um, and we'll be better for it. Um, so, you know, I, that's really what I have. So. I mean, I just want to say thank you for coming on and, uh, and helping us out. Um, you said a lot of good stuff, so that's what I got. Cool. Lucas, that last comment, looking like a rising senior. Yeah. What? And my last thing I would add to that would be, I remember uh, Mark Wonderling having a conversation with a younger guy at one point and saying, in 10 years, you're going to remember if you beat F&M at F&M, you're not going to remember how many points you score. Um, so those are the things to take away. Be like, that shit doesn't matter. Um, what you do as a group are the things you're really going to remember. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I have a question. So how did you maximize your schedule in college? Um, so something that I, I still do to this day is – I'm somebody I love lists. So um, for me, a list is a way to show that I accomplished something. So when I would go home for the summer, I would have a list of like four different work. Like I would have, I'd break it down and I would be like, okay, there's a shooting workout I could do. There's cardio. So I can do sprints, hills, any sort of run. I could do weightlifting or I could do pickup. <clears throat> and I would pick days. And I would make sure today I'm going to check off three of these four boxes. So I'm going to do a shooting workout, I'm going to get some cardio in, and I'll get a lift in. So something from, for me that I, I, that I did that I think would be helpful for you would be like even when you go back to school, like I, I didn't necessarily do it in school as much as I did in the summer because I probably because school is a little bit more structured for me. But – in the beginning of the week, be like, okay, this is how many shooting workouts I want to get in. I'm getting this in on Tuesday, Thursday, and Wednesday. And then I I need to do it because it's just something mentally. I write it down, and I have to check that box. Because that check, like, I do it to this day with, like, working out. I track every day I work out what I do, and then I have to check that box in my calendar because that, that box – it just like is a sense of accomplishment for me. 
Um, so, so having something like that, that you hold yourself accountable on paper is something that's helped me that you could, that you could use. Here's my checks. I love it. Daddy. I love it. Uh, really, really good stuff. I, 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 obviously guys, organization, Jimmy, great question because the, the really the capacity, I've always been struck by the Kevin Small, um, I remember when I was at St. Joe's, a buddy of mine got me hooked on Tetris. There weren't video games like there are now, right? This was at the advent of video games, and one of them was Tetris. And I went like two weeks where every day, to the point where in class, I would see little things coming down in front of my eyes, like trying to put them together. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? I just wasted two weeks. And I think the capacity, you, we have more than enough time in a day, but not if you wake up at 11. Not if you wake up at, at 1.30 in the afternoon and your first class is at 11 and you get out of bed at 10.45, right? There's plenty of time, and, and that's a great example, Maddie, of having the list set and then saying this is how I'm going to attack my day, program style. For those that had the program a couple of years ago. Uh, all right, so uh, Maddie, I think we better uh, wrap it up as we've got to 8.30. I want to make I got, sure that we start. I got, I got one more. I'm, oh. I'm going to call BS on that. You said the playoff game was the best game. Uh -oh. oh, come on. That Penn game, I went by, back and watched some of the clips today. I, that was in Matt Knowles. That was, so, that was someone else. What I'm was going on over. today? in terms of your approach to that game, because obviously we, we compete against those types of like level teams all the time in the Centennial. Centennial, there's a lot of good players. What was going through your head that day? So last comment, I know Coach needs to get off. My last comment about that game, I don't know if Coach remembers that, but I was really struggling prior to that game. I was coming off. Well, I remember. Game. And on the bus, it's really easy to play well when you're on the bus on the way to the game. And Coach Small came to the back of the bus and said to me, your one job to do today is shoot. So I just had complete rain that day. I didn't care if I missed anything. I was keeping – it was keeping coming. I mean, you were hitting fadeaways, like falling out of bounds. Like your whole body's twisted the other way, and it was just – needed going. I was through. I missed enough in the couple of games prior. Let us, let us give a round of applause to our guest here tonight, Maddie. Uh, Maddie, you're a man amongst boys and proudly living. Uh, Maddie and I both went to a Jesuit high school where they teach being people for others. Uh, tonight you were uh, in the proudest tradition, being uh, a man for others for us here. Uh, so thank you. Um, 